All right, I am here with uh, Sarah Meyer. Sarah, um, will you say hello and um, why I'm bringing you on with me? Hi, uh, I'm Sarah Meyer. I work in the expungement clinic at UMKC Law School. So this is so funny because you and I worked at 911. My students know I used to work at 911, but I worked with you for like two years, the two of us shooting the breeze, gener generously saying, at four mm -hmm. in the morning, just trying to kill time until the next call comes in. Anyways, mm -hmm. here we are now, and I just happen to be friends with somebody who works in the exact field that's going to be maximally impacted by Amendment 3. Now, Amendment 3 just got passed. It will now legalize uh, recreational marijuana, but what also does it do in the expungement realm? So it is calling for expungement of marijuana offenses that are misdemeanor E and D felonies. Um, I'm not entirely sure if it's uh, going to be automatic in some areas or if it's going to be petition based or how exactly the details are going to work, but it's going to allow for the expungement of those offenses. Now, um, the language of the ballot item says that it will allow people to petition for it. So it's mm -hmm. unlikely to happen automatically. Um, and to be honest with you, petitioning, I mean, Governor Parson here in Missouri is not super friendly to the idea of legalization. So who knows how he'll treat petitions, but you work in expungement mm -hmm. and you, you've worked with in the past, I imagine marijuana related offenses, correct? Yes. So is your life, are expungement people, is your life gonna be completely upside yeah. down for the next year or two? What's gonna happen? Uh so our clinic uh, right now, about two years ago, we had an expungement day and we uh, invited people to apply on Facebook and everything. And we got over 900 applications before this started. And we are just now getting to the end of that backlog. So I don't know what it's gonna look like if it's gonna be absolutely insane or not. I, I just, I don't know what, what regardless, if it's 900 more applications, we've got a more efficient system that we've worked out. So I think we'll be okay. It's just gonna take us a little bit. Yeah, um, so in the off chance that any students watching this have marijuana offenses um, or know somebody that have marijuana offenses on their record, they are now eligible to petition to have that expunged. What's the first thing these people should do? So in order to get it, the expungement process in Missouri is actually very complicated and it's not friendly for pro se litigants, as in people who represent themselves. It's much smarter to have an attorney, but not everybody's got a bunch of money laying around for an attorney. So I think the most important thing is to educate yourself about the process and even like contact I mean, you could even contact our clinic and just ask questions on what you should do because we help people fill out the pro se applications. Um, but with this bill, the marijuana uh, offenses were, if they were eligible before, but this I don't think will go towards the lifetime limits. Missouri only allows you to have one felony and two misdemeanors expunged. So if somebody's already had those, this could, and I think this could end up being an addition to those, I'm, I'm not really sure. People haven't worked those questions out just yet, but they definitely need to educate themselves about the process before they start the petition or what's anything. Your, what's your clinic called? It's the UMKC Expungement Clinic. The UMKC, University of Missouri, Kansas City Expungement mm -hmm. Clinic. Yes, and I'm pretty sure we have a webpage that's up and going. So um, I'm just gonna speak from the heart here. I don't know if Amendment 3 is the best thing we could do. I don't know if it is or isn't. I think, especially when it comes to like licensing, there's lots of problems with the licensing part. Operating legal marijuana shops is difficult in America anyways. I don't know if it's the right thing to do. What I, what I do know, ma'am, is that the system we have right now, which completely criminalizes marijuana, on like the scale of like heroin mm -hmm. that definitely doesn't make sense yeah. from your perspective working in expungement you've seen amendment three what are your thoughts on it you specifically and i please let's understand that though you have an expertise here this is do just editorializing 
So I think that when people are, when marijuana is the first criminal offense that you get, just simple possession of it, um, if you have 35 grams or less, it's an A misdemeanor, but let's say you have 37 grams with you or, you know, just some arbitrary number above 35. Now you're looking at a felony. That felony in the moment you don't realize is going to affect literally the rest of your life. You're not going to be able to get housing at a lot of places. Uh, I don't know what year it was, but up until recently, you couldn't qualify for SNAP benefits. It used to affect uh, Pell Grants and things like that. I'm not really sure what the status of that is now. Um, but it is literally like when they say it's a gateway drug, it's not, hey, if you use this, you're going to use other drugs. It's like a gateway for, okay, well, now the rest of your life is impacted and you know, you could end up turning to crime because you can't get a high paying job with felony on your record. Boy, that's a really interesting point because you can't, it, it's really, really, your job opportunities shrivel up and you just raised a few other areas I hadn't thought of, but your job opportunities shrivel up with that conviction on your record. It's interesting that you mentioned it as a gateway drug. Clearly we've often termed it that, but there's no evidence medically that it will open you up to other drugs. But we do have, as you are living evidence that um, your position anyways, the people you work with, that having that conviction on your record I mean, makes crime more likely in your future simply because your opportunities are so slim. So it is kind of a gateway. It is a gateway to more criminality, more legal system involvement in your life, I guess. Well, and it's unfortunate because a lot of the people that I've seen, you know, they may catch a felony marijuana charge and then they get something else later in life and they, they say, oh, I want to expunge both of these. And it's kind of like, well, pick which one is poisoning your life more when really they're they're both detrimental like that's just terrible and you know somebody who's 50 is still paying for a mistake that they made when they were 18. Uh, Ma'am thank you so much for giving us a few minutes of your time any parting thoughts on this before we move on? I'm just glad that it passed. <laughs> okay that's great yeah. well thank you again ma'am and uh, uh, we appreciate the help and, and uh, on this issue and best of luck <laughs> with Thanks. the gigantic avalanche of stuff you're going to be dealing with in the near future. I'm all about helping people. So <laughs> take care, ma'am. Thank you.